Today's episode is about reflections. Not necessarily how they work, but what can we do with science to make it look like a reflection doesn't work? That's right, today's episode is about a broken mirror and how do we make an object's reflection different? Welcome to Impossible Science. Hey everyone, it's Jason Latimer, world champion of magic, coming to you with another Impossible Science. Even though we're familiar with the subject of a broken mirror, where it, the reality's not matching its reflection, it turns out, even though it sounds impossible, a mathematical engineer, Professor Kukichi Sugihara, has figured out how to actually do this without it being a trick. And it uses what's called a ambiguous figure. What is an ambiguous figure? Well, an ambiguous figure is an object that has two images in the same image. It means it can actually be two different shapes from two different vantage points. This is an ambiguous figure. If I put this up to the mirror right now, you can see the squares in the foreground. But look in the mirror. Isn't that crazy? There's squares in reality, there are circles in the mirror. This is where it gets nuts. I'm gonna flip this around, no sleight of hand. Now you've got circles in reality and you've got squares in the mirror. What? <laughs> circles? Squares. Squares, circles. Now, if you're anything like me and reflections get kind of confusing, just go, why do mirrors reflect left and right, but not up and down? See, you can look in a mirror and go, I can wave my left hand and my reflection's right hand waves back. I can wave my right hand and my reflection's left hand reflects back. And if I tilt my head, the same thing happens. My right hand is left hand in the mirror and my left hand is my right hand in the mirror. So it's switching left and right. And yet when I tilt back up, it's not switching up and down. How does the mirror know? Mirrors reflect front to back. And to really understand this, you have to understand the law of reflection. The angle of light coming in is equal to the angle of light coming out. I'll show you with an experiment. With uh, some safety glasses and uh, some smoke so you can see it. If you look at this, the laser coming in bounces off. If you imagine a perpendicular line right here, the angle to this laser is the same angle as it's reflecting out. The angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, why is that important? Because with a mirror, all the light coming in is simply retracing its steps on the way back out. Going in at 90 comes back out at 90. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. So if you're wondering if a mirror doesn't reflect left or right and it really doesn't have any magic powers, why does a vampire not show up? Like in Hotel Transylvania? Well, mainly because a lot of people think that vampires must be transparent and so the light travels through it so they won't have anything to reflect off a mirror but that's not necessarily true because if they were transparent you wouldn't see them even if there wasn't a mirror you know, i have a question for everybody why are the vampires clothing vanishing too in a mirror like i get it if the vampire is magical but their clothing should show up in the mirror or or how did he do his hair in the morning how do you shave okay back to the science if you were to go outside and look at the stars, you might find four bright stars that you could use to trace out a square. While this may make a perfect square to us, it's very likely that the actual position of those stars do not form a square from any other perspective. Each of those stars could be closer or farther away. In fact, all of our constellations that we hold dear to our heart and our imagination, they are not on a flat plane. Even though they look like it, our constellations only appear as those shapes from our very distant vantage point. If we imagine a line made up of individual points, it's easy to visualize how each of those points could be closer or farther away. So from one perspective, it's possible to have an infinite amount of ways to draw a line. And since a 2D drawing is a flat image made up of multiple lines, you could see how there could be an infinite amount of ways to draw that image. When I first saw this, it blew my mind. Luckily, I was able to get a hold of Kichi Sugihara and actually ask him, what is going on? Why am I able to see something different than its reflection? Professor Kokichi Sugihara, welcome to the show. So, where did the idea come from? Okay, the first of all, I was doing research on, on computer vision in which one of my topics is to deconstruct three-dimensional object from two-dimensional single image. And mathematically, the single image cannot represent a 3D object uniquely. There are many, uh, much freedom, uh, meaning that uh, the same picture 
correspond to infinitely many possible 3D objects. When we have two desired shapes, circular from the first viewpoint, rectangular from the second viewpoint, then we can construct two equations right. and combine them and solve it. And if it has solutions, that is the object we want to get. In that way, I <laughs> found the circular rectangle cylinders. Am I right in saying you have one equation looking yes. straight out, and then you have another equation, and there's a point that solves both both equations? Uh, yes, yes, yes. So it's a kind of triangulation. In order to find the point in space, we can specify the two appearances from the two viewpoints. That is a triangulation. And extending that principle to a set of points, we get that kind of object. Professor Kokichi, thank you so much. Thank you. Now, once you understand that you could draw a two-dimensional shape an infinite amount of different ways, well, then ambiguous figures start to make sense. See, imagine a circle on the table, and from my point of view, there's equations that make up a circle. Okay, now think of a totally different set of equations that make up a square from my point of view. Now make those two equations from this side of a circle interfering with these that make a square. And given the infinite amount of possibilities, there's points that are satisfying both equations at the exact same time. And those points make up the ambiguous figure, which is why you see two different shapes, which is why the reflection is different than the foreground so good it doesn't just have to be circles and squares <laughs> and it doesn't have to be limited by size i even printed a really large one to see if it would actually hold up and it does not disappoint well that's it for today i hope you enjoyed learning how reality doesn't necessarily have to match its reflection and if you enjoy learning how to make the impossible possible through science let me know click the like button and share the video with your friends and until next time, stay curious, because the right question changes everything. I told you, Papa's always here for you. Again!